Well, hello everybody and welcome to the Learn to Fix Yourself So You Can Fix Others webinar. My name is Reed Davis and I'm actually still waiting for Netta Smith to join. And some of you are invited by Wendy Kubadanka from the IIN. I want to tell you that I have found the IIN to be just a fantastic organization and lots of IIN students have signed on to the FDN program, the FDN, which is the Functional Diagnostic Nutrition Program. I want to give you a little bit of background about myself. I've been practicing Functional Diagnostic Nutrition for over 12 years, although in the beginning I didn't call it that. I want you to know that I've helped thousands of people to get well and stay well naturally. As I was just saying, I've been doing this for over 12 years. I actually was the case manager at a clinic in Poway, California, where I was in charge of all the patients who came through the door. Every one of them had to go through me for my clinical nutrition practice, as well as the chiropractic and acupuncture and massage. And we had an osteopath and naturopathic and all kinds of practitioners there. So they all had to see me. And I started sort of getting rid of the ordinary nutrition that I was doing a long time ago so that I could just not be in the sales business. I felt like a salesman. I felt like I was always just selling supplements to people. And I didn't like that. So I, I finally hooked up with some really intelligent people that were doing functional lab work. And I followed in their footsteps for a while. And I tested thousands of people. I was obviously in this great position to do that. And besides having the clinic to work with, I had thousands of people coming through my screening business because I was out screening, doing health screenings. And in the course, by the way, we teach you how to do some of this stuff so you can build your own practice. But I had this fantastic opportunity to make my own observations about who got better. And what I'm going to tell you is that Two things came out of that. Uh, one is I built one of the most successful nutrition practices in the country to the point where the lab was asking me, you know, who the heck are you running all these labs? The other thing was a couple of discoveries I made. One of them I wrote on the screen here. If you're looking at slide number two, it says no two people are alike. And I want to guarantee you that there's not two people alike on the planet. And that's why you need a system in order to help people. I'm sure at the IIN you're learning some really wonderful methods of intake and working with people and we're just going to expand on that today and tell you how I've been doing that for a while and um, the other thing that I realized real quickly is that you have to be working at the underlying cause or condition here's the three things that people wanted to know when they walked in the office and I believe it's the three things you want to know as a health seeker you're not just in the business of helping people you want to be healthy yourself and so does your family members and there are three main questions people ask when they come to me and it's do you know what's wrong with me can you help me and have you helped others like me now I unequivocally answer all three with yes and uh, I just got a note here that Netta is trying to log in um, I uh, will just forward this one little email to her hold on one six folks so let me go back to my webinar now. Thank you folks for your patience with that. And um, I want to tell you that the three questions people are asking, I'm able to say yes to. And because when people ask, do I know what's wrong with them? I say yes, you have malfunctions and you have disease processes. And these people are saying to me, look, all the other practitioners are doing, all they do, and they meaning Western medicine basically, is treat the symptoms and I'm sick and tired of treating symptoms can you help me find out what's wrong with me well absolutely I have the functional lab work that will identify the healing opportunities now that in a nutshell folks is what you do and it's basically all you do is identify healing opportunities we don't diagnose or treat diseases because most of us are not physicians now, if you're a licensed physician that's a different situation but what we do is identify the healing opportunities and then use natural protocols that help restore normal function when you restore normal function the body returns to healthy and healthy bodies don't have a lot of symptoms so the other question here have you helped others like me yes personally thousands upon thousands of people but because we are now t 
teaching FDN in 35 plus countries, there are tens of thousands of people being helped by FDN. So if you got asked these three questions, do you know what's wrong with me? You could say, yes, ma'am, you have malfunctions. And can you help you? Yes, I can run functional lab work. Have you helped others like me? Well, at first, you just want to say, yes, I can tell you that FDN has helped thousands and thousands of people. So you kind of borrow on our success, and then you can get rolling with it. And I want to show you an intake form that we use. This is really well developed over a long period of time. We call it the Adrenal Stress Indicators form. And you may not be able to see it real well on your screen. I am going to re record this. I am recording this webinar. And uh, I'll be able to sort of zoom in on the screen during the re replay of it. So what we do is we ask our clients to list their main complaint. In this case, it's fatigue and lethargy. We want, we want to know how long has this bothered you? How long has this been going on? And, and basically, how often does it bother you? And what have you tried that has not worked? In this case, this person's tried medication, extra sleep, and resting. Um, what does it prevent you from doing that you love to do? Well, this person said, train at my fullest potential for Olympic weightlifting. Someone else might say, I can't play with my kids. I don't have enough energy to spend time with my spouse or, you know, whatever it might be. We want to know motivating factors. On a scale of 1 to 10, what is your level of commitment to getting well? I know in your training, you're learning that commitment is incredibly important. And for females, we always want to know what is their menstrual status, whether they're uh, premenopause, perimenopause, or postmenopause, that kind of thing. Now, also on this form, we give people a chance to list their top 10 complaints. I always want to know what is your main complaint. Like if I had a magic wand, what would that one thing be? But we'll let them list up to 10. And then on the rest of the form, this is really, really interesting. So everybody watch this. Uh, everybody look at your screen now. And look here because it shows you a list of categories that are functional categories and symptoms are always going to be related to one of these seven categories so below now this is a very long spreadsheet and below this section here that I'm pointing at right now is a list of oh, a couple hundred different complaints that people could have and so they just go through that list and it doesn't take them a long time but they go through the list and they assign a number of points to each possible complaint and then the spreadsheet has macros built in and it does the rest for one thing it adds up the total number of points now hopefully you can see in your screen here if everyone wants to look that this person has a total of 426 points and if Netta was on the phone I'd ask her Netta how many points is someone supposed to have and she of course would say well none you know you're, we're not supposed to have any points you shouldn't have symptoms uh, now the coolest thing about this ASI or Adrenal Stress Indicators form is that it gives a person a chance to list all of their, not just complaints, but things they will be prodded to notice about themselves. Might be that their eyes hurt when they go out in the sunlight or just, you know, there, there's hundreds of questions there for them to answer. And you can see that this person now has 426 points divided up into these seven categories. So that's their total points divided up into these seven categories. Uh, endocrine function, neuro tissue health, musculoskeletal health, carbohydrate metabolism, eicosanoid modulation, detoxification, and fat and protein metabolizing. And so you don't have to understand what all the things are right now. Just that's what's all in the training. But the focus here is that we're going to work together with this person not to treat these symptoms, but to treat the underlying causes or conditions that are at the base of those symptoms. And so the next time we have them fill out this form, which you can see here on the to the left of the now column is the second test, third test, fourth test. That would be like maybe 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, or it could be, you know, 60, 120, 180, whatever. It's whenever you have them you do some work with them and you have them retake this test now the obviously the goal would be to have a lot less points the next time around but it wouldn't be because you just sold them some supplements that would make them maybe sleep better or have you know better looking skin or something and it, you would certainly wouldn't have prescribed them some medication just to get rid of those symptoms they would be on way too many medications 
the way that their symptoms are, and these com complaint points are going to be reduced is by improving all of these functions here. Now let me go ahead and uh, go to the next slide so you get a better understanding. We call that form the adrenal stress indicators form because we've found through our many, many, many years of research and again some of my mentors worked on this before I came around and steroid hormone balance which is basically cortisol to DHEA, testosterone to estrogen, progesterone to estrogen, and some other really important ratios. They have to be in balance. If they're not, then there is very likely a problem with your adrenal function and some other things going on that are stress-related. Again, I can't tell you everything about this right now in this very short webinar. But in the hub here, we have the steroid hormone balance and adrenal dysfunction. And on the periphery, we have those same seven categories. These are the same endocrine function, neurotissue health, musculoskeletal, carb metabolism, etc. that were all of those points were came from. And you can see, like with endocrine function here on the lower right-hand side, that that would involve thyroid and ovarian hormones and the pancreas, not to mention the testes and other parts of the endocrine function, pituitary, hypothalamus, thymus, gland, you know, all these things. So, and points will occur, in other words, this is when we have them go through the ASI form, a number of points add up. So this person had 113 points. In this area, they had 205 of their complaint points from this area. They have neurotissue health, which regulates quality of sleep and mood, memory and learning. And then, you know, I'm just going to quickly kind of spin around. You can see how many points they had, and back to that 426 points total. Well, again, you hear me say this many times. Look, uh, quality of sleep and mood, that could be improved by taking some chamomile tea, some kava, and maybe some melatonin, um, and certainly... You know, thyroid function can be improved with medication. There's even some natural things. But what we want to do is, if we can, find out what's really wrong. So we go to our lab work, and you know already that that's what the Functional Diagnostic Nutrition course is all about. And I am ripping through all this, folks, because I want to get you out of here. Uh, you know, I have other appointments as well. So instead of treating the symptom we get to the underlying causes and conditions so we're able to do lab work in all of these areas and a lot of it feeds back into this adrenal dysfunction and you notice these, these lines have arrows on both ends that's because you could have weak adrenals and therefore let's say out here on the top left if you have weak adrenals carb metabolism could be off It'd be very hard to maintain steady blood sugar levels this glucose homeostasis and so the arrow would go that way. But if you are eating poorly and uh, spiking your blood sugar all the time because of bad habits, then you also will cause stress on the adrenal glands. So there are two-way streets here. We've got that pretty well dialed in. And these are the kind of complaints that people are coming to us with. And so those would be either their main complaints or attached to their main complaints. So People are going to come to you with allergies, acne, rosacea, blood sugar problems, depression, and anxiety. You can read this slide as well as I can. I don't have to read everything on it. The indigestion, bloating, inflammation, low sex drive, hypertension, fatigue, lethargy, weight gain, and things like that. Now, if you don't see your main complaint on here or your next client's main complaint on here, that's okay. If they have some different main complaint, these will be listed among there are other complaints. So if someone just comes to you and they say, look, I just want to get fit. You know, I'm just coming to you as a nutritionist, personal trainer kind of person, and I just want to, you know, add some muscle. Well, by the time you end up getting to know them, they're going to have a lot of these problems too, and any other chronic stress-related condition. So again, there's lots of medication for all that stuff, and there's a lot of supplements they could be pounding down to try to treat the symptom. And typically people have already been into the grocery store or vitamin shop and read all the labels or they've been studying on the internet and they've been doing this stuff for a while and they're not satisfied they're not happy the reason is they haven't got toward the causal level or causal factors so this is our realm and that simple form that that you just looked at that will point towards these causal factors, adrenal related dysfunction, circadian rhythm problems, poor nutrient breakdown and absorption, prooxidant versus antioxidant balances, and you would probably know that as free radical damage, 
uh, dysbiosis and gut malfunction. Hormone imbalances are huge. I'd say we are at the top of our game when it comes to the hormones. Inflammatory states, immunodeficiency, sluggish liver, and other detoxification problems. You know, there's a direct test for that. I'm going to show it to you in a minute. Bacterial and yeast overgrowth, antigenic overload, pathogenic conditions. These are the. This is our realm. This is the level we work at instead of treating those symptoms. And most of you know that your clients and you have some of these causal factors. That's why we call this first, fix yourself first. So this ASI form points towards the causal factors. And I want you to know that I just said you guys, and it's 70 to 80% of you, have problems in one or more of these areas and are not using the correct protocols to permanently resolve them. And that's what we're going to talk about today. A lot of you are actually trained in functional approaches but you were never given a simple strategy to handle a case from beginning to end to get a successful outcome, including your own. So unless you're in absolutely perfect health, this is for you. And here's the disturbing thing. Now, four years ago when I started teaching, remember I've been doing this 12 years, but I started teaching this course four years ago. It has evolved. It has become to the point now where I'm actually pretty darn happy with it. We're really getting this across to people fast. The, the problem is that four years ago, no one was running labs, and now everyone's trying to run labs. Lab testing has become really popular, and I think anyone can order them. But I'm telling you that most lab runners aren't really sure of which tests to run, when to run them, and what to do with the results. They really end up just treating the test results instead of the client or person, client or patient. And if you do that, if you just treat test results, in other words, if you don't have a real good system based on someone with a lot of experience having done this, you could really not be helping that person to your best of your ability. Now, I want to tell you, too, that I'm one of the most experienced clinical advisors for a lab called Biohealth Diagnostics. I give them a certain number of hours each week to help doctors and other clients of theirs interpret their test results. So I, I do this regularly, like dozens and dozens of labs every single week. I'm look, helping the practitioner interpret for their client or patient. And they really aren't sure. It, it's really kind of amazing to me. And that's why I'm uh, stressing this and, and getting the word out here about a course. So moving along very quickly, I realize Again, I've got other appointments, and I need to get through this, and I need to respect your time. And I want you to hang on and, and throughout this whole thing. At the end, I'm going to give you a special offer. So it's going to be worth hanging around and p trying to pick up some tips here. Now, I want to tell you why we look at the body the way we do and why we do functional lab work instead of just lab work that would identify a disease so you could treat it. First of all, I don't really believe in diagnosis and treatment as much as I do in building health. So we have to know how the body breaks down. I call this the dynamic adaptation in phases of adrenal dysfunction cortisol dysregulation chart. So what we're going to do is pretend for a minute, you're looking at this chart, that someone is actually healthy and normal and doesn't have any stress. And I don't know who that person is, but they'd be over here in the green. They would have cortisol levels, by the way, between 23 and 42 nanomoles per milliliter. But that would be just a normal cortisol output. But I don't want you to think of this as just cortisol. There are other markers that would sort of get elevated. So we're going to take this person who's in a eustress predominance, meaning the good kind of stress only, and we'd say that they're adapting very, very well, that they're in homeostasis or balance within the fundamental homeostatic controls. They've achieved stress resolution. In other words, their body is resolving stress on its own. And if there is such a person called normal, this would be what they'd look like. I don't actually know a lot of normal people, but that would be quote unquote normal, a body that's adapting perfectly to the kinds of stress that it's under, these being good kinds of stress. The kind of stress that makes a butterfly come out of its uh, cocoon, so to speak. Now, if a client's otherwise healthy and they uh, experience some acute dis distress, that's the bad kind of stress, like someone cuts them off in traffic or smacks them in the face, or they, they get exposed to some virus, or they eat a food that they're sensitive to, or on any level at all, any kind of influence, whether it be environmental or lifestyle or 
product-based or emotional kind of things, spiritual stress, whatever it might be, that kind of distress would actually rise. Certain markers would go up in the body. Your response, your adaptation to that would cause certain products in your body, like cortisol is one and adrenaline is another, you know, the norepinephrine kind of thing. Uh, secretory IgA certainly is one, your immune system. In order to resist this acute distress, your body would go into a resistance mode and it would crank out some, at least crank out some cortisol. Your adrenal glands would go to work extra hard. And you would have this attempted adaptation. And by the way, how do you think you would feel at the top here? Let's say you were responding appropriately to stress. Like, you know, you have a job that you don't really like, but, you know, it gets you by, you make good money. Um, you go home to your wife and uh, two kids or your, your uh, husband and, and children and things, and um, you seem to be handling it all very well. How would you feel up here if you're really cranking out the cortisol and the adrenaline and the uh, secretory IGA, your immune system's working good? How would you feel up here? Well, you would actually feel pretty good. Now, it looks like Netta finally got on. Netta, are you there? <laughs> I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. You made it. Okay, Good job. I'm so sorry. <laughs> hey, well, listen. I hope you picked up where uh, where we're at here. Now, how does someone feel at the top of this, Netta? Were you well, with me? They feel great. Yes, yeah. I'm here. I'm with you. I'm online. They feel great when they're there. They exactly. Don't realize that. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Well, good job. Yeah, they feel good here because they got everything cranking out. But how long is that going to go on when when distress is the predominant lifestyle. In other words, when they're just continuously in this uh, distress. In other words, they don't like their job. They may not even like their spouse. They may have um, some food sensitivities that they're not even aware of. They could be in an environment where they're breathing bad air, uh, like we are out here in California now. They could have radiation uh, things. All, all this distress predominance, what's going to happen to that adaptation? Well, it's going to diminish somehow adaptation starts to go south and you're not able to adapt here the way you were adapting here and then uh, how does someone feel here Netta uh, on the way down they don't, they don't feel like they have a whole lot of energy they're really dragging they're not feeling great yeah or they could have um, their hair falling out or their skin could go bad or they could get sore joints or they could get all kinds of sort of vague and uh, interesting symptomatology and what do they typically do well they typically go to the store and try to buy something and when that doesn't work after well then they're going to the doctor and by the time that you know this distress has become really chronic and the body is now losing this ability to adapt in other words let's say adrenals are starting to dysfunction the immune system starting to dysfunction uh, this you get this cortisol dysregulation where your circadian rhythm gets interrupted now you don't have the normal sleep patterns and energy patterns and things. So you're absolutely right. Uh, people keep heading south, and that's usually when they come to us. And so uh, they start coming to us in this area here. It might be just that they start feeling like, you know, I need more coffee than I used to, and I used to have more energy when I got home, and now all I can do is zone out. And by the time they get down in here, what we'll call a phase two of adrenal dysfunction, they are highly symptomatic. Not always. They could still have... You know, not a lot of symptoms, but by the time they get here into collapse and exhaustion, in other words, failed adaptation, they're really feeling um, the clinical and medical term is crappy. And so they, that's how they come to us a lot. So this chart for you folks is to illustrate how the body adapts. At least here's one way of looking at how the body adapts. Certain markers will go up as long as the organs and systems are working well. And then as the organs and systems start to uh, not work so well, those products that they put out, such as cortisol, may diminish. Now, to be realistic about this, I want you to know, it doesn't always happen in a nice, smooth transition like that. I have had people, this is what I think is really cool about this work, Netta, and see if you agree. You'll have people, that when you explain this to them, and you show them on their let's say cortisol output, let's say they're a 30, here's the 30 over here, and so that would put them right here in, in phase two. And then you explain what phase one is, and that you ask them, well, how, you know, do you identify with this? Does this work for you? And what do they usually say? They usually say, yeah, that's me. I bet you I was in stage one for, 
years and because you know I hated this and I hated that and I had this going on with me and I had that going on with me and and they totally identify with being down here in stage two or phase two they they get it and uh, I had one lady tell me she was in phase one for 22 years as a school teacher kind of a thing so but it is important for you to realize that it, it isn't always a smooth transition. The body, you know, depending on the things you're doing to relieve stress, you know, you might get into this acutely distressful situation. Your body fails, starts to really fail to adapt. You start crashing real hard, and then you, you know, take a vacation and uh, you do a bunch of things to build yourself back, and then it can go. So that's kind of how our lives go sometimes. And we'll pick people up as clients who are in various stages. That's why you need the training, or you need to be able to identify what state of dynamic adaptation they're into. Now, the other thing that can happen is you could just die real quick. There, this idea of dynamic adaptation. There are, you know, things that will kill you. Just you'll be normal, and then in an hour later you'll be dead. Like if you go into anaphylactic shock from eating peanuts, and you're highly allergic to peanuts, you know, your lungs would basically fail to work, and you'd you'd fill up with water and you'd choke. So, or you could get Ebola virus. We all saw that movie Outbreak, where in six hours the person went from normal to to dead. Those aren't good FDN clients. <laughs> you know, the ones that are where the compression of this system is so short we need to have work with people who have where we've got time to make an observation and then get them to make improvements in health so uh, there's a little more sort of words to the wisdom and this happens and we can make the, get lots of measurements and assess people within these hormone immune digestion detoxification systems and intestinal barrier of course now I, I don't want to run out of time and I think that we're uh, pushing it here so I'm gonna just even go harder here and let you guys know that we do have these functional labs assessments that you can learn to run Now I know most of your unlicensed practitioners your nutritionists and I will teach you how to do this so that you can do it on your clients and it doesn't matter where you live you can do it you'll learn about this biohealth 205 adrenal stress profile uh, detoxification and immune system testing the metabolic assessment profile intestinal barrier function lots and lots of other labs here you can come back and watch this later and, and read this you can write to me uh, we'll make sure you get all the information about what's in the course but I wanted to show you an actual test result this is obviously just a uh, part of the lab result which I want you to pay attention to right now is this cortisol sum of 16, which is really low. I'll show you how low that is in just a minute, but that's a real low output. You can see the reference range is 23 to 42. Even if you're in that range, it doesn't mean you're healthy, but just for right now, you can see it's way below the reference range. The DHEA is also really way below the reference range. And the relationship between these two is elevated. We have a... Um, elevated cortisol to DHA ratio that's telling us that there's a lot of chronic stress going on a lot of chronic stress going on and that their adrenal glands are really fatigued they can't crank out the cortisol anymore and they've also uh, depleted their ability to make DHEA that's what happens under stress we also see a morning noon afternoon and night time that look real low here kind of middle of the range here real low here you can see this real disruption in the cortisol rhythm this person's gonna have terrible sleep problems they're gonna have low energy they're gonna have all kinds of complaints related to adrenal dysfunction and cortisol dysregulation lots and lots and lots of complaints so, so you know if I haven't sound like a broken record yet you can treat those symptoms or you can look at this test result and get the underlying cause this person does need some immediate support such as adrenal support but they also need a lot of stress reduction and they're an excellent candidate for our kind of care let me show you how that looks on this chart remember we just looked at the dynamic adaptation chart well this is where a 16 shows up they're in that stage 3 or phase 3 of the inability to adapt their adaptive reserve is disappearing 
and look there's no stage four there's just failure this person could end up with very very serious diseases and being treated by doctors and taking out body parts and all the kinds of things that happens in western medicine they're a great candidate for our kind of care because we can rebuild restore repair and have them build health now when when you look at a dynamic adaptation chart and you place yourself or one of your clients here and I do want you to start thinking about this where where will you end up when you do your lab work it's really interesting if I can uh, please interject for a second um, I obviously you know when I came on to um, FDN and had this test taken I said ah oh, I'm definitely normal I eat well <laughs> I have high energy <laughs> this you know this is gonna be you know just a test I took to tell me that I'm doing well and I have to say, I was shocked when I found out I was stage two. Um, and when I did realize it, and I did start following the protocols, and I could not believe how much more energy I actually could be living with um, instead of how I was living. So, um, I yeah, I was in stage two. That's where I was. And I thought I actually was, um, I thought that I couldn't be any better than that until I started the protocols and realized the energy level that I was missing out on, that I really could be living with. So, Fantastic. I just wanted to add that. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. So someone here has, definitely has low cortisol output, but beyond that, they're in a catabolic condition. When you have this high cortisol to DHEA ratio, you know, cortisol is catabolic. Cortisol kind of burns you up a little bit. DHEA restores you, or DHEA is more anabolic type of hormone. So uh, you're in a catabolic condition. This person will have multiple malfunctions and imbalances, regardless of their symptomatology. This dynamic adaptation is happening within all of these areas, all at the same time. It isn't just adrenal dysfunction. To just say, oh, your adrenals are tired and give you some adrenal support doesn't work on most people. I used to do that. Uh, oh, it's your adrenals. And, but he, here we look at them, but we look at them as reflective of everything else going on in the body. And we need a very, very individualized approach. Now, this, by the way, the second page, we, we looked at page one of a 205 adrenal stress profile. This is page two, where we see the, the estrogen, at least the estradiol and the estriol, that's your two main estrogens, uh, your progesterone, your melatonin, and the testosterone. And... Um, I'll tell you more about those. They they do actually look kind of in range, but there's really some critical clues there, and we'll come back to it uh, if we have time. But um, there's lots of symptom correlation. In other words, this uh, idea of low progesterone to estrogen and that, that kind of thing really matters. I, I want to go th uh, to the next slide because I want to get you guys back to work or whatever it is you have to do where would you go from there let's say you'd run an adrenal profile on someone and you saw oh look your adrenals are weak or you might even not run the lab and just guess that the adrenals are weak one of the choices you'd have is to treat the test results you know they say you've got weak adrenals we could give you some adaptogenic herbs and some glandular products um, and the hormone levels were kind of low especially that testosterone. So there are creams and drops and pellets. So that's one choice you would have. And that might help this person with their main complaints, which if you remember, were fatigue and lethargy. But they had over 400 points on their complaint list. And they are in phase three adrenal dysfunction, cortisol dysregulation. They do have these other imbalances going on, especially that cortisol to DHEA uh, and things. So that's one choice. You could just treat the results which you know is would be uh, these kind of things another choice would be to go to lifestyle stuff and this is important um, as far as the diet goes people are using the metabolic typing diet very successfully the paleo diet very successfully elimination diet very successfully you know obviously don't eat junk eat only good foods and things like that um, rest is very important it's one of my main things to go to you could take naps go to bed early um, you could check out your exercise you might need to reduce it some people do some people need to increase it um, but what if you wanted them to reduce it but like this person's main complaint was that they didn't have enough energy to train for their Olympic weightlifting thing so, so you might have some battles going on there you could also sell them a bunch of supplements treat the symptoms just keep trying things until something seems to work 
Uh, that's never worked well with my clients, but some people might abide by that. You can give them vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, essential fatty acids, stress formulas, things for whether they're male or female, protein shakes, energy drinks. So here's another choice. And both of these might look like good choices to you. If I go back to choice one, hey, you know, support those adrenals, augment the hormones, or get them on a good diet, rest, exercise, and supplements. Both of those might sound legitimate. Another one, though, would be to run some ad additional labs. Well, which one? Are you a physician? Can you run a CBC chem panel? You might find a solution to their main complaint there, although it's not likely. Would you do a thyroid screen? They had 113 points in the endocrine area. Would you run an intestinal barrier function screen? They had points there. Would you run a GI pathogen screen? No, maybe they've got parasites. Would you run a neurotransmitter test or a liver function test? They had 31 points in the area of detoxification problems. Autoimmune testing. Would you run all of these? Well, the truth is that you've got to know which test to run next. So you follow a logical course. You can't run every lab. Look, you, here, here we're back to the ASI form. They have 426 points. They have all these problems. Um, you have the main ones. You have these, the other in their top 10 list. And then you have hundreds of points down below the screen here all into these functional categories well you can't test for everything you have to know the two or three labs that you can run in every person to have a beneficial effect in other words to identify the healing opportunities and give them things to do to improve health in these areas now this metabolic assessment profile that I mentioned forms the other part of our main intake you looked at the 205 adrenal stress profile which we looked at both pages of that and now we're looking at another page of test results. These are my two main flagship tests. One saliva, one urine, easy to do. Uh, three markers here. One is negative. Um, that's actually a good thing. The urinary indican. However, urinary lipid peroxides measures oxidative stress. That's a person with a lot of free radical damage. That comes from toxicity. That can cause serious damage in the gut and the rest of the body. It can break you down. Basically, um, this is a measurement of, if you think of an apple turning brown, or a nail out in the rain rusting, or your car out in the backyard rusting for over the years, that's oxidative stress. This is a measurement of oxidative stress in the body. Now, the only legitimate reason for having it would be excess exercise. In other words, the body can punish itself if you do enough bad things to it. But the rest of it's going to come from things that we have uh, to, more investigation to do about. So it's a really neat measurement. And the other one is urinary bilacid sulfates. This is a direct measurement of liver function and liver congestion. If someone's not detoxifying properly, they will not be healthy. If someone has excessive lipid peroxides, they can't be healthy. If they have a positive indican, they're not breaking down and absorbing protein very well. In other words, they're malnourished. So these are some real critical markers that we've looked at, saliva and urine. We can act on these healing opportunities, and there's plenty of them here, and follow the leads to additional malfunction. The other thing that you need to know is that this actually looks like it's in range. If you were un inexperienced or don't get trained by an experienced person, if you only run the lab and don't know how to interpret it, you'll look at that as being kind of normal. And so with same thing with this one. That's not true. You, this really shouldn't be above a five, and this also shouldn't be above about a five or five and a half. Because I've run 11,000 of these, and I've seen the people who have these kind of levels be very, very, very unhealthy. So, so you need someone to teach you who has the experience and give you the functional numbers, not just lab reference ranges. We'll teach you all about that. Here's a good for instance on what people, most people miss. When they look at this test, this, we're back to that same lab result where we saw the cortisol sum at 16. So you go, oh, that's a phase three adrenal dysfunction. I'll support their adrenals. Well, there's more clues than that here. There's a relative elevation at noon. So here we see the morning is very, very low. And then all of a sudden the noon is within the range so if below the range to within the range that is called a relative elevation and that tells you something about foods and the environment that are stressing them out whipping those adrenals and making them stay elevated or in this relative elevation 
elevated state. Now the afternoon, by the way, is back to this 2.1, and that's showing you, yeah, this is truly a person with some sort of really low adrenal function. So we have our confirmed assessment, but there's these super secret clues that you need to know about so you can actually investigate further really help this person the other one is the nighttime cortisol which is also relatively elevated now you know th this is the kind of clues you get when you have the experience and that's what I want to give to you by having you all take the FDN course the DHEA like we said is really low sort of anyone could see that oh you need some DHEA again we don't want to just treat the test results now here's some super secret clues to this that probably no one noticed. For one thing, this progesterone, even though it's in that reference range of 50 to 400, I'm telling you it's really low and needs support. And the estradiol, even though that's also um, in the reference range, we have a problem with progesterone to estrogen ratio. It should be about a 30 to 1. So a lot of people looking at this would miss it. Um, if, if it's supposed to be a 30 to 1 ratio of progesterone to estradiol, you would take the estradiol, multiply it times 30, and what would you get? You'd get 75. We see the progesterone is low. Here's the real problem with that that might be missed by someone else. The 2.5 is in the reference range, and most people are going to go, oh, you're in the reference range, you're fine. Uh, but it's actually an estrogen dominance. Now, you, you guys have studied what is, happens if someone's in an estrogen dominant state. That's not a good thing. The other huge clue here that you wouldn't know is the melatonin is actually low. Even though the range is 12 to 23, I've done thousands and thousands of these, and I've seen people below 18, they have gut dysfunction. You know, there's three to 400 times the amount of melatonin in gut tissue as there is in the serum, and you need to know these things, that that's actually low. So that it's a big clue about gut dysfunction, especially when combined with the relative elevation of nighttime cortisol. Now, if this sounds like Greek to you, if this sounds like, well, he's going really fast and I understand what he's talking about, it's okay. You're going to be able to listen to this a couple times. Or, you know, you'll have other options, like signing up for a course and learning and getting all the, the benefit of all this experience. So where do you go from here? Well, we had our one, two, and three choices. Here's another choice. You can act upon these healing opportunities, support the endocrine, immune, digestion, assimilation of foods, detoxification functions like liver function, restore the steroid hormone balance, all with completely drugless, potent, proven professional protocols and lifestyle modifications. That's definitely what we do in FDN. And we would continue to seek and resolve the hidden stressors. In other words, we've gotten a clue about some, uh, the adrenal dysfunction, the circadian rhythm imbalance, the steroid hormone imbalances, and those things. That's from the 205. From the 101, that simple urine test, we have a lot of clues about excessive toxicity and free radical damage and the breakdown of the body. Remember the apple turning brown. We have a lot of brown going on. We also have that liver dysfunction. Well, it's not good enough to just tell someone they need some liver flushes and liver support, like products like the silymarin and things like that. You have to get to the, all of the hidden stressors and causes. So what I want you to be seeing here is that there is this logical progression. You've got to do some really good intake, starting with the form like the ASI form that gives you functional categories to place all their complaints in. You gotta have a couple flagship tests that really reveal a lot of healing opportunities and also will point you towards the other things that this person needs to resolve to build their health up. So here's some of those additional paths that they could take. The intestinal barrier function screening, pathogen screening, food chemical, drug sensitivities, metals, and things like that. Your decision will change the lives of your clients and of yourself when you do this work on yourself. So I'm trying to be mindful of the time I wanted to get done in an hour, which only gives us about 10 more minutes. And I want to sort of wrap it up. I'm not going to show you a lot more lab and try to prove my knowledge of these things. I just want to tell you that when you've tested 11,000 people, like I have, you realize there are no two people alike. Responses to treatment or any process may be totally different. You know, there's these things we use sometimes, not with every person, but they're little hormone drops.
they're over the counter they can buy them in the store you don't have to sell them you're not going to be uh, doing hormone replacement or any of that stuff I'm just telling you your clients could buy these hormone drops I'll give you a resource for that I've had people respond one drop didn't make them feel very good and I've had other people say I want to take it like they're at a frat party you know they really want to down this stuff so that's something that I'm sure you understand responses to treatment will be totally different and we have no control over those responses and you're going to need to know some things that w either you're going to have to get the experience or learn from someone who has the experience and when you have enough experience you learn the most predictable direction I call it reasonable predictions to take them in what to expect and how to walk them through it how to educate them because after all that's all we're really supposed to be doing so you have your choice, folks. You can do the thousands of tests, or you can follow the steps to success that I've developed as if you had done that many. Here's one more quick example. I said I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to rip through this. Here's a test that's very confusing if you're not trained in it. In other words, if you just said, I'm going to run an intestinal barrier function screen, and you knew that enough to say, well, that's going to see if the intestinal barrier, you have this like second skin. It's, it's the reason a dog can drink dirty water and not get sick. Why can you and a dog drink dirty water and not get sick? It's your intestinal barrier function. Well, this test is very confusing. Um, here we have aerobic bacteria low, but anaerobic bacteria is equivocal, meaning who knows, and dietary proteins are elevated. Yeast is low, and the secretory IgA, which is a main marker for your defense system, are the Marines out fighting or not, that looks like it's in range. Well, if if you look at this at face value, you'd say, oh, look, you've got elevated dietary protein uh, immunoglobulins, therefore you have some food allergies, and, you know, the the foods, there's five foods involved in this, we need to get off those five foods. Now, if that's all you used this test for, you would have wasted this person's money. You really need to know that this secretory IgA is actually here on the dynamic adaptation chart. It's actually starting to shut down. Um, in other words, um, if this secretory IgA had been 100, now here's the range 20 to 60, and if it was 100, uh, then you'd go, oh wow, look, you've got an infection, your body's fighting something. So you'd, you'd say, oh, that's good, you know, your body's fighting it well, your body's adapting very well to this infection. So let's just find out what the infection is and kill it and you'll be okay. But here in this case, it, it looks like you're not fighting anything. That's the misinterpretation. Oh, look, your body's fine. It's it's you know there's nothing going on. Your secretory IG is quote unquote normal. It's in that reference range. So so you're fine. You know there's no problem here. Well, that's complete nonsense. Um, you wouldn't help this person at all if you didn't understand that uh, secretory IG goes up when there's a stressful situation, but when it becomes chronic, the body starts to lose that ability and your production your functional capacity is diminished. Your ability to, to dynamically adapt to that, uh, whatever is offending it, whatever pathogens are there, you know, things is being lost. So that's the kind of interpretation you need to be able to do. It's called a functional interpretation versus just looking for something to treat on the test result. This person with this low secretory AGA, which quote unquote looks normal, actually had a couple things going on here. This is an overgrowth of bacteria, E. coli. They also had Candida, and they also had Helicobacter pylori. If you didn't have the insights and things that that are uh, really important to get that we teach in the FDN course, um, you could have completely misinterpreted their intestinal barrier function screen. And oh, by the way, let's say you are a person who knows about stool testing, and you and this is what I get all the time when I'm working for the lab doing those clinical advisory calls. Oh, hey, I ran a stool test and I found this H. pylori. How do I treat it? Well, the way you treat it is you make sure that person gets rid of it and never gets it again. You have to go back. I'm going to go back real quickly. You have to rebuild their intestinal barrier. That's how you really help that person get healthy. I hope this is coming through to you folks. I think you're pretty well educated to know what I'm talking about. That if you just treat the bug like H. pylori, they're just going to get sick again. You didn't really do very much for them. Uh, you got to treat the underlying causes and conditions that allows them to get all three of these infections in one person. 
uh, we don't even see them this bad that often. So the other thing, this is a food sensitivity test. We have no time for that, but that's really critical. I want to ask you if you see the problem here. Adrenal dysfunction, cortisol dysregulation was present here. They had low sex hormone levels, hormone ratio problems, poor digestion and absorption. They had toxicity, poor detoxification pathways, congested liver, poor mucosal immunity, pathogens present, food sensitivities, and other stressors and malfunctions. So you and the people come to see you typically have the exact same problems. They, all these things are what's going on. And you have to know exactly what steps to take, and that's what we'll teach you. you got to learn this. you got to learn to say, here's how I work. Or at least that's what I've done, and that's what I do. Is This is how I build up really one of the top two or three most successful nutrition practices in the country. I learned to say, here's how I work, ma'am. I use functional lab testing to identify malfunctions at the subclinical level, that means pre-disease level, within the steroid hormone balance, cortisol dysregulation, digestion and assimilation, detoxification pathways, immune system, intestinal barrier system, pathogens, and environment and foods. So that's the kind of lab testing I do. So that I'm able to address all of your health concerns within all of these physiological aspects at the same time or at least in a step-by-step -step method. And it follows a very logical course of investigation. People don't have to run five labs at once. Most people don't have the money to do that. And you don't have the confidence or experience to hand someone five test kits right now. Uh, you need to follow a logical course. You need to seek the hidden stressors and underlying malfunctions until the patient's well. So it's a process you get them into. Each successive lab identifies healing opportunities, that's our target, and points a finger in the right direction at the next level. The labs tell us what to work on, how to work on it, where to look next, how to get deeper and closer to the underlying cause or condition. And the absolute bottom line for me is we don't treat test results, we treat the person. So I said I was going to show you the methods that I developed over a 12-year period that helped a lot of people to get well and stay well naturally, our health goal, and helped me build one of the most successful practices in the country. So I wanted to introduce you to FDN so you could decide if it's something that you wanted to let us help you with, you and your clients and your family. The challenge for you is what to do, when to do it, how to individualize your program. And now you've got the opportunity to get the experience with someone with over 11,000 tests under their belt without having to do them yourself. Or you could go do them yourself. And you'll be able to answer yes, yes, yes to all three of these questions with confidence, the same confidence that I have. And I want to ask you what that's worth. You can tell that we're getting near the, the offer here. Um, I designed the FDN certification course so that you can learn everything I do turn around and duplicate it in your practice and it will only cost you about what you would charge one client over a period of time. I personally charge $1,500 for the average intake and recommendations and protocols. That's what I charge someone to work with them. That goes in my pocket. That's not lab fees or supplements or anything. Uh, you can take the entire FDN course, do all the work on yourself and be fully trained to do it on others for less than that. Not much less, but it's right around there. With almost 800 of your peers having already been through the course, I want to tell you that their average return on investment is three times what they paid within the first month. All you need is a few clients. You'll get all your money back right away. And that will be determined by you alone. I can't dictate how busy you're going to be or how aggressive you are in promoting yourself, but that's the possibilities. And the effect on your own health is worth the price of admission. If you only ever worked on yourself doing the FDN program, it's it's worth it. You're going to run two personal labs and receive your own personalized, that's a Dress for Health Success program, the DRESS stands for Diet, Rest, Exercise, Supplements, and Stress Reduction. We'll customize a program for you. That's part of the course. We provide you with 24-7 access to the lessons, the personal coaching with experienced mentors, ability to take this course and apply the information regardless of where you live. One of your students uh, wrote me from Lebanon this morning already. Um, integration of lab work with any other discipline if you're a nutritionist or acupuncturist or chiropractor or medical doctor or personal trainer. Uh, we give you all the forms, videos, audios, charts, and graphs. You don't have to buy anything extra. It is perfectly 
designed for distance consulting. I do this over the phone with people all over the world. You don't have to have them come and see you. That saves you a lot of money and time. I'll teach you how to charge for your services and it's a really wonderful opt-in self-care model that actually works. Self-care being the functional word there. There's only two reasons why you won't sign up. You really don't know if you can do this and you don't know if you can afford it. Well, I want you to know that I have a guarantee. If, if after lesson one, and you have two weeks to do lesson one, you do, if you don't think it's everything I laid it out to be and you won't be able to help people improve, and if you don't think I'm really practically giving it away, let me know and I'll give you a full refund. So that basically is the end of the slideshow and the end of the program. Netta, I don't know if you're still there, but um, do you want to give a real quick um, like testimonial as to how you found FDN to help you and your clients? Absolutely. Um, when I uh, graduated from IIN about five years ago, um, I, of course, found the school to be very valuable, learned a lot of information. Um, what I felt, though, at uh, while I was working with my clients was that I was limited as to how much I can help them. Uh, people came to see me with uh, a slew of health issues, and I, if any, whoever's on this call that happens to be uh, the students that I'm coaching, um, you know, I hear that from you guys all the time. What if someone comes in and talks to me about having fibromyalgia? What if someone comes talks to me saying that they have this and this? How do I know what to do? And that's exactly the same situation I had for about two years uh, after uh, graduating from IIN, um, having these people coming in with these types of uh, issues. And uh, all I could do was provide them a diet and couldn't take them any further. So what I started to do was investigate and find out uh, about FDN, and I was very glad when I came upon it because all the people who had come to see me, now I could say, yes, I can give you some answers. Yes, I can help you. Let's find out what is malfunctioning that is causing this issue to occur in your system. And uh, when we started working, uh, when I started working with my clients in that way, um, uh, you know, people were just ecstatic. They started receiving information that they weren't always receiving from uh, their typical medical doctors um, as, the, you know, they were being prescribed medications and so forth. And this was just another avenue of fixing the issue without uh, taking those type of medications. Um, so, um, so I've had a lot of very happy clients. Um, and what's happening is word of mouth, you know, when someone's happy, they start to tell other people about it. And uh, so I'm getting clients from that avenue as well. Um, so, you know, again, like I said, uh, you know, a lot of you have been mentioning to me over the phones when we speak to each other, uh, what do I do, what do I do? And here's really the answer for it. This is what you do. This is how you find out what is going on with that person that's causing that symptom and help them to correct it. And uh, not only will you have a happy client, but you will feel like a uh, million dollars because you were able to really help this person live a better and healthier life. So I highly, highly recommend the program. Thank you, Netta. I really appreciate that. And I love working with you. I love your gang. And uh, I know that I can help the IIN students get to the, they always say the next level. I don't really know what that means. I just know that I get deeper and deeper and deeper into people's underlying causes and conditions. And at the same time, I avoid the diagnosing and uh, treatment of individual diseases, you know, practicing medicine without a license kind of thing. I'm going to teach you how to just help them heal, just identify healing opportunities and get better. And it's all in that step-by-step -step method. And w would you say that just about anyone could do this? I, I, yes, and I have to say my initial, you know, when I first start, signed up with FDN, I was very nervous because uh, it was very, I felt like, oh, my gosh, what are we talking about? <laughs> the yeah. terminology of this and that because I wasn't a doctor and I had no experience with that. Uh, but as I went through the classes and, and, uh, and learned everything about the body, I was amazed as to how much I now understood. I was amazed as to how much now I can help other people who don't understand um, so uh, what is happening with them. So, yes, you don't be afraid of if any of the verbiage we used on this webinar and you're feeling like, oh, my gosh, what is he talking about? Uh, because it will be taken through step by step, and you really will learn everything, and and you will feel confident in being able to help people. So, so yeah, I just want to thank you. 
You know that um, unfortunately that's all we have time for. I didn't see a lot of questions in the in the question box here. It, it, maybe they didn't show up, or maybe people didn't have a lot of questions. Um, but thank you very much. I'm going to have to go on to my next appointment now. Hope you guys have a lovely day wherever you are uh, in the world. And just let me know how I can help you. Go ahead and sign up. So love you guys. Thank you, Netta. We'll talk to you again real thank soon. Thank you. Okay? All right. Bye-bye, okay, bye, everybody. Bye-bye.